Macbeth's channel is an amazing place. It is a long channel, about 14 kilometres in length, that's protected from the ocean by a, a large island called Breaksea Island that stops the incredibly powerful westerly swells that, that are typically found in that region and completely define what can live in that area because of the, the power of the swells. But that island breaks the wave energy and so you've got this almost riverine channel run, running 14 kilometres up to a big um, harbour called Bathurst Harbour. You've actually got an incredible amount of fresh water. It rains a lot in southwest Tasmania. And that fresh water isn't just clear, it's actually water that's draining from the tannin peat like bogs um, that you find throughout southwest Tasmania, what we call button grass plains, and, and that's very much tea coloured water. It runs down the whole range of rivers in that system and it sits as a layer in that area over the salt water underneath. So the fresh water is more buoyant and sits on top. And it's so tannin stained, the water, that it, it creates an incredible light filter. So it actually blocks out the light that gets to the bottom of the, the seabed or throughout the water column. At the beginning of Bathurst Channel, at its eastern end, its most inland end, it's so dark at two metres um, for much of the year, you cannot see a thing. It's pitch black. When you get to more the ocean end, 14 kilometres to the west, you can see a bit of light down at about five metres, but that's about it. You still need torches. And so that very strongly influences what can live there particularly uh, at, again at the eastern end, there is just no light. So seaweeds that would normally dominate the rocky reefs in that area just can't exist. There's not enough light for them. There's a little bit of light partway down the system and we do find some seaweeds just growing on the edges of the, the reefs and headlands and things, but that's it. Below that, we end up with a whole lot of what we call marine invertebrates. So kinds of animals that are attached to the seabed, often growing as colonies. So they're things like sponges, um, soft corals, sea whips, and sea pens. And these things actually filter feed in the currents that race in and out of the system without being outcompeted by seaweeds that would normally outgrow them. And so what we find there are not just some, some typical sponges and things you might see on a shallow reef anywhere around Tasmania. We're finding all of these species that would normally live at 200, 300 or, or even 400 metres deep out in the deep dark ocean. Um, they just happen to have ended up in, in this system and, and they're living and growing there as well. So it's actually almost an analogous place to the deep ocean right there in two, three, four or five metres of water where we can actually go and experience that as, as divers, which is, which is quite amazing. It's a drowned river valley, so historically during glacial times there was a river running through this area that cut its way um, through the, the mountains to create quite a, quite a deep passageway. And since the last glacial, that's flooded. So it's actually about 60 metre deep channel, not particularly wide in places, it's only several, several hundred metres wide. It's totally globally unique. And, and that's why we have that, um, that marine park there to protect that. And, and it's completely needed, you know. There are a whole range of pressures in, in, in Tasmania that are expanding, including marine farming. I mean, some of the companies would love to go there now, but it would be devastating for that particular habitat if, if that kind of thing happened in that system. The, the nutrients, it's just the disturbance from boats moving past uh, resuspending sediments would be catastrophic to that region. 